Hello, welcome to our unique learning system math lesson. My name is Charlotte Lucas. I am an autism low incidence mental teacher with Richmond Public Schools. I provide support to our classroom teachers for our students across all four content areas. And I'm so happy to be able to work with you today. Our math lesson today is counting coins. We will use a hundreds chart, we will skip count by five, 10, and 25. We will add money by counting on using the hundreds chart, and we will identify the dollar sign, decimal point, and cent sign. We have a lot to do, so let's get to work. All right, we have a word problem, and we'll be solving our problem inside of the money box. In order to solve our problems, we're going to be using a hundreds chart. The reason we're using a hundreds chart is because 100 pennies equals $1. If you have 100 pennies, you have a whole dollar. And if you have a whole dollar, you need to use a dollar sign when you write it down. Now, if you have a dollar, we're going to write it as dollar sign, the digit, and then we're going to have a decimal point. A decimal point means that whatever comes after that decimal point is less than a dollar. Everything on the right side of the decimal point is less than a dollar. And when we read this, we will read one dollar and no cent, zero cents. One dollar and. When you see a decimal point and you're counting money, the decimal point we say and. Now, if we have less than a dollar, then we're going to use a cent sign. We don't need a decimal point. We have 25 cents. A quarter, the value of a quarter is 25 cents. We use a cent sign. We do not use the dollar sign and we are not using the decimal point. So we will say 25 cent. If we are using 10 cent, we can use the cent sign, the 10 and the cent sign to indicate 10 cent. And if we're using the nickel, the value of a nickel is five cent. So we can use the cent sign for the nickel. So when you're representing money, you can use a cent sign if it's less than a dollar or if you have a whole dollar, if you have 100 cents, then you can use a dollar sign because 100 cent is $1. Dollar sign, the value of your money, and then a decimal point. And when you have a decimal point, you say and. All right, so let's solve some word problems. Our first problem today says, how much will it cost? Mrs. B's class is buying items to use for lighting and sound in a play. How much will it cost? Right here, this item costs 50 cents. See your cent sign? No decimal point, 50 cents. Well, we want to count 50, but we don't want to put 50 whole pennies in there. We want to skip and make the value so that we can use fewer coins. So we could use nickels to solve this problem. If we use nickels, we will be kept skip counting by five because a nickel is worth five cents. If we use our hundreds chart, you can see the pattern that comes about five. We skip all of those numbers and we just go straight to five. And if we just, every time we hit five, we say the next number, then we are skip counting. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. We skip counting by five. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. 
five cent represents the nickel and that's the coin we'll use to try to solve our problem. So let's go back to our problem and see if we can get a solution. If we're using just fives, we're just using nickels, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Well, this is playing with me today. That's all right. We can still count it. Let's go. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. The value is 50 cent and we have 50 cent in nickels. Excellent. Let's move to our next problem. All right. This time we have 70 cent. Now, there are a couple of ways that we could solve this, but let's see if we could solve it using dimes. If we're using dimes, we want to skip count by 10. Dime equals 10 cent. And the wonderful thing about this hundreds chart is no matter where you start, if you start here, 10 more, all you have to do is move down and it would be 13. 10 more and all you'd have to do is move down and it's 23. So counting is very easy because if you want to add 10 more, you just move down. So if we skip counting by 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. You can also use your fingers and count. If each finger represents 10, how many dimes will you need? One for 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. We need it 70. 70, how many fingers is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven fingers. Let's solve our problem. If we're using 10 cent, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Let's count. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 70 cent. Excellent. Let's move on to our next problem. Mrs. B's class is buying items to use for lighting and sound in a play. How much will it cost? Count the coins. This time, the value is 25 cent. Well, if we want to use the value 25, we have a coin that will satisfy that. If we use our chart, we can see that 25 cent is the value of a quarter. So in order to solve that problem, we will only need one coin. That would be the easiest way to do it. Let's give it a try. Twenty-five cent. We don't need any more because another quarter would make the value higher. So we have solved our problem with one coin, twenty-five cent. Excellent. Let's see how well we can do with our next problem. This time we need ninety-five cent. Well, that's going to be a lot. Let's look at our chart and see what we can do. We always want to start with our, with our highest value coin. 
And our highest value coin right now is the quarter, which the value is 25 cent. And if we skip count by 25 cent, we say 25, 50, 75, a dollar. 25, 50, 75, a dollar. So we are able to see that if we want to get to 95 cent, we can go 25, 50, 75, another quarter will be too much. So if we're at 75 and we're trying to get to 95, we can move down two times. 75, 85, 95. Each time we move down, that's one dime. 75, 85, 95. That makes it really easy. Let's solve our problem. 95 cents. We want to start with our highest value coin and our highest value coin is 25 cents. 25, 50, 75. We've got 75, another quarter would be a dollar. That's too much. So let's try dimes. Remember our chart. 75, if we move down, that would be 85, and 85 and 10 more, 95. That solves the problem. Let's count 25, 50, 75, 85, 95. Excellent. That was a little bit hard, but you did a fabulous job. Let's see what we have left. 83, my, my. This is different. This is different, 83 cent. Let's look at our chart. 83 cent, we still wanna start with our highest value because it's more than 25 cent. So let's start with our highest value. We need 83 cent, 25, 50, 75. That's three quarters. Another quarter would be a dollar. That's too much. So 75 down 10 cent more would be 85. That's too much. So 75, 80. Excellent. If we go 75, 80, now we have five cent more. That's a nickel. But five, another nickel would be 85 cent. That's too much. So we say 80 and count on using ones. And if we're using ones, what coin has the value of one cent? That would be a penny, excellent. We can count on from 80 using pennies and get to 83, 80, 81, 82, 83. Excellent, let's solve our problem. We need to get to 83 cents. Start with our highest coin, 25, 50, 75, excellent. Not a dime, that would be 85 cent. Let's do a nickel, 75, 80, excellent. Now we can count on Using a penny, a penny is one cent. The value is one cent, 80, 81, 82, 83. Excellent. We did it. We needed 83 cent. We started with our highest value. We tried to add a dime, but that was too much. So we used a nickel and then we counted on to get to 83. Excellent. This is a lot. You're doing a great job. Let's see what we have next. 68 cent. That is also different. Let's give it a try. Let's look at our chart. 68 cent. Well, here's 25, 50. If we start with quarters, we can use two. 25, 50. We need 60. We drop down one, that's a dime, 60. And we can count on from 60 using what? Pennies. 
one cent at a time. A, the value of a, a penny is one cent. 60, 61, 62, 63. Let's solve our problem. Ooh, it's 68 cent. Miss Lucas made a mistake. Go back, Miss Lucas. Let's get this correct. Back to our chart. We need 68 cent. 25, woo, -woo chart please. There we are. 25, 50. One dime, 60. 60, 70. No, that's too much. Let's go to 65. That's a nickel. 65. Now we can count on using pennies. 65, 66, 67, 68. Excellent. Let's see if we've got it right this time. 68 cent. We're going to start with our highest value coin. 25 cent. 25, 50. We can't use another quarter. That would be 75. So we need to use dimes. 25, 50, one dime. 60, 60, if we add another dime, that will be 70, too much. We have to use a nickel. 60, 65, now we're able to count on from 65 using pennies. A value of a penny is one cent. So let's 65, 66, 67, 68. 25, 50, 60, 65, 66, 67, 68. I love this counting on. That makes life really simple. Let's see what we have next. You're doing a great job. Ah, let's see. 67 cent. Well, this is a good practice number. Let's give it a try. Let's look at our chart. If we look at our chart, you starting with the highest value, which is a quarter, a quarter is 25 cents. We can skip count by five and see that we have 25, 50, two quarters. We need to get to 60 cents. We could drop straight down to 60. That's a dime. We can go, if we drop down to another dime, that would be 70. That's too much. So let's use a nickel, 60, 65, excellent. Then we can count on using one cent, the value of a penny, 65, 66, 67. Let's see if Miss Lucas did it right this time. Aha, 67, I think we've got it. Start with the highest value coin, which is the quarter, 25 cent, and skip count. Let's go, 25. 50. Can't use another quarter. That would be 75. So we drop down one and get 60. Let's use a dime. 60. If we use another dime, that will be 70. Too much. Let's use a nickel. 65. Now we're able to count on using pennies. 65, 66, 67, 67 cents, let's count it out. 25, 50, 60, 65, 66, 67, 67 cents. Excellent, I'm very proud of you. In fact, I wish I had the 67 cent, I could buy myself a soda. Let's move on and see what we have next. Oh my, it's changed up. Now we have $4.15. Remember, here we have a dollar sign and a decimal point, which means that we have four whole dollars and then we have less than a dollar on the right side of the decimal. So we have $4.15. How much does it cost? Find the amount. Mary Beth is buying items to use for lighting and sound in a play. How much does it cost? $4.15.
Let's see how we're going to solve this one. If we have $4, that means that that dollar sign means that we have four whole dollars. If you have 100 cents, you have a dollar. 100 cents equals one dollar. This problem has four dollars. On the left side of the decimal, all of those numbers are whole numbers, four whole dollars. If we're reading it, it would be on this side, the value of the dollar, using our decimal point, we say and, and then the amount of the cents. On this, we have one dollar and zero cents. One whole dollar. So let's see if we can solve our problem. Let's go to the money box. We're going to start with our highest value, which would be the dollars. Let's get four. One, two, three, four. Excellent. How much sense? Everything on the right side of the decimal point is less than a dollar. And that value is 10 cents. We can say we have one 10 and one five. We have one 10 in the tens place and five ones in the ones place. My language has changed a little, but this is an easier way to look at the value of our money. One dime, one 10 in the tens place and five ones in the ones place. Let's see if we can create that value. This time we're just looking for the cents. One dime in the tens place and a five in the ones place. Now we could use five ones, but that's a lot of coins. Let's just use the five, the nickel to represent the five. Four dollars, 15 cents. One, two, three, four, and 15 cent, 10, 15. Excellent. This was a challenge and you did an excellent job. We were able to see that we have whole numbers on the left side of the decimal. We have less than a dollar on the right side of the decimal. And yet we were still able to satisfy our problem. Let's see if we can do another one. I'm excited about this. Uh -huh. $3 and 65 cents. Mary Beth is buying items to use for lighting and sound in a play. How much does it cost? Find the amount of money. $3 and 65 cents. Dollar sign, decimal point. Let's see if we're able to do it. If we have $3 on the left side of the decimal point, we know that we have $3 whole dollars. Let's get that. One, two, three. Now, if we want to count out our change, the amount that is less than a dollar, we can go back to our quarters chart and skip count by 25. Let's see if we're able to do it. 65 cent, we've done that before. 25, 50, can we use another quarter? Cannot, another quarter would be 75 cent. So we'll use 25, 50, another dime. That would be 60 cents, 25, 50, 60. All we need now is five cents in the ones place. Five cents, we could use five ones, but a nickel is sure is faster. One, two, three, 
three dollars and twenty five fifty seventy. I'm sorry. Let's start again. Miss Lucas made a mistake. Twenty five fifty sixty five three dollars sixty five cent. Excellent. Well, let's see. This last one, which is four dollars sixty cent. That's easy. We'll be able to do that really quickly because we already know we have a dollar sign and a decimal point. On the left side of the decimal point are whole dollars. Everything on the right side of the decimal point is less than a dollar. So let's get our dollars first. Four of them. One. Two, three, four, four dollars. And decimal point says and 60 cents. Now we learned a little while ago that we can use our fingers to figure out dimes. That's really easy. Let's see how many dimes we'll need because for 60 cents, we can skip count by 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. How many dimes? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six dimes. We could use dimes and solve that problem. If we stuck to our pattern of using the highest value, we could start with quarters. So let's give that a try. 25. 50, now we have 50 cent. If we use another quarter, that will be 75. Too much, can't do it. Let's go back. Let's use a dime. 25, 50, 60. $4.60. $4.60. One, two, three. Four, 25, 50, 60. Excellent. I am so proud of you. You did a great job. You were able to solve all of the problems that we had today. Let's uh, review some of the things that we've learned. We identified the dollar sign. We identified the decimal point. We know that if we have a dollar sign and a decimal point, Everything on the left of the dollar sign is a whole dollar. Everything on the right of the decimal point is less than a dollar. So we will use the dollar sign. Did you notice that we didn't use the cent sign? Didn't have to, we used the decimal point. Excellent. We also learned about, and let's see if we can find a cent sign, because we learned about the cent sign. Here we have the cent sign. Please notice, we're using the cent sign. We do not have any whole dollars, none. Therefore, we're not using the decimal point. If you use the cent sign, you do not have to use the decimal point. So 67 cent, we identified the decimal, I'm sorry, the cent sign. So. We also were able to skip count by five for nickels, 10 for dimes, and 25 cents for quarters. We also know that 100 pennies, 100 cents, equals one whole dollar. You've done an excellent job. I look forward to working with you again. Bye now.